right, so we're diving into the Golden Bachelorette finale tonight. We've got this article here called Inside the Golden Bachelorette Finale. Mm -hmm. Love, heartbreak, and the most unexpected MVP. That's all about Joan Vasso, so oh. her crazy journey to find love. I mean, you know, we've all been glued to our screens this season, and that finale was something else. Mm -hmm. right? it just, I can't get over how the producers just nail those classic reality TV moments. Like, seriously, every scene was just perfectly crafted to make you feel all the feels. Yeah, it's really incredible how these reality TV shows, especially like The Golden Bachelor, they really know how to use like universal storytelling to pull you in, you know what I mean? Like they play on our emotions, they get us invested in these characters and their relationships. Like the article talks about Joan's romantic boat ride with Chalk Ray with the Disney music playing in the background. I mean, come on, that's like straight out of a fairy tale. It's all about adventure and escape and happily ever after. And we just eat it up because we all want to believe in that kind of love. Right, exactly. Like, who doesn't love a good fairy tale ending? <laughs> and and speaking of expertly crafted moments, we got to talk about the rain during Guy's heartbreak. Like, the article describes it as this huge downpour happening right when Joan's letting him down easy. On the surface, it's just s sad, right? But yeah, I feel like there's got to be more to it. I don't know. It felt it felt so deliberate. Like the rain was like a visual metaphor for his tears. What do you think? Oh, totally. I totally agree. That rain was not a coincidence. It was like straight out of a movie. You know how in films they use weather to like emphasize the drama of a scene? It's the same thing here. They're using the rain to make us feel even more for Guy. It's like this symbolic way of saying, hey, this guy is really heartbroken, right? And it works. It totally works. Like You can't help but feel for the guy. But okay, let's move on to some of the other characters who really made this finale unforgettable. Like Joan's son, Nick. Remember, he was so skeptical of Chalk from the beginning. The article mentions how he was like really hesitant to give them his blessing. And it makes you wonder, was that intentional on the part of the producers? Like, did they cast someone like Nick on purpose to add a touch of realism? You know? Yeah. Because not everyone's going to be thrilled when you fall in love, especially later in life. Hmm. You know, that's a really interesting point. I think Nick's skepticism definitely adds another layer to the whole story. It reminds us that love stories, especially later in life, aren't always simple. You've got families involved, you've got history and baggage, and sometimes people just don't see eye to eye. And yeah, maybe the producers played up his doubts a bit to create some tension and keep us guessing. You know, will Joan choose Chalk even if her son doesn't approve? It's all part of the drama. Right, and it definitely kept us on the edge of our seats. So it's like, even those seemingly authentic moments of family drama might be part of a bigger, carefully crafted narrative. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think about, right? Like what's real and what's just for the cameras? Yeah, it's like peeling back the layers of an onion, you know. <laughs> reality TV is this weird mix of reality and fabrication. They use editing and music and camera angles to shape our perception of what's happening. It's a carefully constructed illusion and we buy into it because it's just so damn entertaining. I know, it's like, you know, it's fake, but you can't help but get sucked in. Yeah. And that's the brilliance of it, I guess. Exactly. Oh, and we can't forget about Joan's best friend, Nancy Wright. She was like a ray of sunshine throughout the whole season. The article talks about how she was the perfect confidant, always there to listen and offer advice. But she was also hilarious. Like, she always knew how to lighten the mood. And, you know, I think that's another classic reality TV strategy. They need that balance of drama and humor to keep us hooked. Nancy was like the comic relief amidst all the heartbreak and tension. Yeah, yeah you're right. She was definitely a fan favorite. But it's interesting how the producers use these supporting characters to like shape the overall narrative. They're not just there for moral support. They're there to add another dimension to the story. Speaking of which, can we talk about the Disney World tie-in for a second? I mean, one minute we're all choked up about Joan and Chalk's proposal and the next we're watching them ride roller coasters with Mickey Mouse. Yeah. It was such a jarring shift like whiplash almost. Yeah, I know, right? Talk about a mood swing. It's like, <laughs> bam, welcome to Disney World. But, you know, it's a good reminder that at the end of the day, these shows are businesses. They got to make money somehow. And product placements and brand integrations are a big part of that. True, true. Yeah. It's all about the bottom line. But let's get back to Joan and Chalk for a minute. The article says they're moving to New York City to start their life together. I mean, that's a huge step, especially when you consider how difficult it is to go from the fantasy world of reality TV to like real life. Right, it's like going from a five-star hotel to a tiny studio apartment. I mean, think about it. They've been living in this bubble where everything is planned and perfect. Every date is an adventure. They're always surrounded by cameras and crew. And suddenly they're on their own having to navigate the real world with all its challenges. Exactly, like bills and commutes and in-laws and all that fun stuff. Plus they've got the whole world watching them, judging their every move. Oh yeah, the public scrutiny is insane. 
Their relationship has been dissected and analyzed by millions of people. Can their love survive that kind of pressure? It's a lot to handle. It's like they're starting their relationship with this pre-written script that everyone expects them to follow. And then there's the whole blending families thing. Joan has her son Nick, and who knows what Chuck's family situation is like. Yeah, merging families is never easy, especially later in life. You've got different parenting styles, potential conflicts over inheritance, and just the general adjustment of getting used to new people in your life. Yeah, it's a lot to think about, you know? It makes you wonder if a relationship that starts on a reality show can actually last in the real world. Like, the odds are definitely stacked against them, but I gotta say I'm rooting for them. I really am. There were some moments, you know, where their connection felt so genuine but maybe that's just the magic of television tricking us into believing in fairy tales. It is kind of funny, right? We know these shows are manufactured and manipulated, but we still get so invested in the stories and the people. I guess we all just want to believe in love and happy endings. Totally, and Joan and Chalk's story, you know, it really resonated with a lot of people, mm. especially those who were looking for love later in life. It gave them hope. Yeah. You know, showed them that it's possible to find love at any age. Exactly, and it also brought up some important conversations about, you know, family dynamics and the challenges of finding love as you get older, and even societal expectations for women, especially older women. Right, like, Joan totally defied those expectations by going on the show and pursuing her own happiness. Speaking of new beginnings, the article mentions the next season of The Bachelor with Grant Ellis. They're promising all these fresh twists, so I guess they're trying to keep things interesting. Yeah, The Bachelor franchise is really good at adapting to the times, you know? They're always introducing new elements to keep the audience engaged. Yeah, like the whole Golden Bachelor concept was brilliant. Exactly. It broadened their audience and allowed them to explore different aspects of love and relationships. So another season ends and we're left with more questions than answers. Will Joan and Chalk make it in the real world? Will Grant Ellis find true love on The Bachelor? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, reality TV is here to stay. Yeah. It might be fake, it might be over the top, but it sure knows how to keep us entertained. Couldn't agree more. So what do you guys think? Do you think Jonah and Shock's love will last? Are you excited for the next season of The Bachelor? Share your thoughts with us. Until next time, keep diving deep.